Darling, ah. how's it going? It's going good. It's going Is it going good? good? Yes, it's it's going good. It's going good. It's going good. 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 Yes. That's good. Yes. But is it perfect? Perfect. Perfect. Perfect? Perfect. But no, it's not perfect. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Gasp and horror. Gasp. But is anything ever perfect? Oh yes, darling. Some things and people are. <laughs> they are? Yes. Are you sure? Quite. Uh, I think maybe it's good enough. Good enough? I mean, good. Maybe it's it's good. Good? Well, maybe it's fantastic. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's dog you. Do you want me to look at it, darling? Huh? Mm -hmm. I'll look at it for you. No, that's just no, 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 I'll, no, 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 no. I'll look. I'll add. I can add. No, 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 really, no. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll add no, something okay. to it. Okay. I'll add no, something no, 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 to no, no, no. it. No, just, no, no, I, no, just that's, that's, I look at it, no, darling. Really, that's okay. Okay. Darling, let no, me really, look at it. I can no, add no, something no. to it, darling. It's okay. No, 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 don't need to. Hi, everyone. I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Quality of work anxiety. Every furniture fabler has grappled with this one, and in the midst of an antique restoration with more issues than one can even keep track of, well, it's easy to get lost in a sea of perfectionist-driven doubts. Are you using the right materials in the right way? Is your work good enough? And is good enough good enough? Oh, 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 come on, old girl. There she goes. Here is my new old friend. This is a lovely antique bow front dresser that was gifted to me by our wonderful, incredible friends, Sandy and Howard. Their daughter, Erin, had been best buds with our daughter, Franny, since they were in the first grade and was always so sweet and awesome with Franny's little sisters. It was kind of like having a fourth daughter. Sandy's dresser had come from her dad's godparents' home. Isn't it amazing how furniture travels? And so I am guessing that our piece was American made, probably very late 19th or early 20th century, and it had seen better days. Its bottom drawers veneer was cracking and letting go. Here you can see where somebody already tried to repair it. It was missing one of its original brass keyhole covers. That vertical trim piece between the two top drawers was missing, and one of its pulls was a different size than the others and seemed to be suffering from... gosh, I don't know what, <laughs> but it was looking unhappy. It had also received quite the over-application of stain, leaving unsightly splashes and blotchiness in that very, very dark finish. And then there was the top. Oh boy, the top. Yeah. The finish was obviously wearing off in patches. There were both highly worn areas and spots where the finish was kind of thick and sticky. There were scratches, ring marks, and also some pretty big veneer injuries. On top of that, the entire top piece was loose. Oh yeah, did I mention the inside of the drawers were pretty rough too? <sighs> Wow. Yep. And so with my to-do list growing ever longer, I began. Whoop. Missing a footy wheel. The first thing I wanted to do was inspect the inside of the piece. I wasn't too shocked to see more over-application of that stain. We seem to be missing a couple of drawer stoppers. But the good news was that the inside was dry and sound, except for missing that bottom panel on the left side. I removed the three foot wheels that were still there. I had the fourth, here they are, cleverly contained in my magnetic tray that John got for me. That's linked below, by the way, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> Oh yes, if you were wondering, Sandy did also drop off those original mirror mounts. There they are. 
no mirror, but we've got those mounts. Then I did a very thorough vacuuming. Always a great step with any piece, but especially an older, very dusty one. As I vacuumed the piece and thought about my overall design plan, I decided I really wanted to try to restore the piece's original veneers. They appeared to be walnut, and I had a hunch that they could be really beautiful if I could save them. And then I wanted to add just a touch of redesign, which I hoped would help highlight the dresser's very best features and give it a sort of anthropology-esque specialness. Feeling too chicken to apply even the smallest amount of water to the top, I decided to just dive right in and begin some sanding. With the finish in the shape that it was, I didn't feel the need to even use any chemicals, and I wanted to see how this top veneer piece would hold up with the sanding, and it actually did pretty well. The old finish released relatively easily, and I was able to really see what I was dealing with. Here's a pretty good scratch. This looks like maybe a burn mark. And there's that very rough front edge. So I know that sometimes folks will remove old veneers and work with what is underneath. I've done that. But this is antique walnut and what was intact looked savable. And so I just couldn't stand the thought. I wasn't 100% sure I could save it, but I really wanted to give it a try. So I got out my glue and my craft syringe. Using that needle, I pushed as much glue as I could under the edge of that top substrate, that piece that the veneer is glued to, and then clamped that down and left that alone for a full 24 hours. In the meantime, I got to work on the rest of the dresser. I removed all of the original poles. There you can see that replacement that almost matches. <laughs> and then I did a very careful low water wash of the entire dresser using only a very little bit of H2O, making sure to wipe back water from those drawer fronts right away. The quality inspection crew came out and inspected the drawers, as they often do, as they were drying in the sun, and then Vinny took up his post and guarded them from any would-be drawer thieves. Good dog, Vinny. Good dog. Stay vigilant. We haven't had any drawer theft since Vinny has been guarding drawers. Back in the workshop, I began to gently sand the drawer fronts, again, removing all of that old splotchy dark finish, as well as any old glue. I also went ahead and removed the old stain from the sides of those dovetail drawers. Then I began repairing that lower drawer. It was the one that I was the most concerned about. Again, using my glue syringe all across that bottom edge. You can see here, I deliberately use a lot of glue. Too much glue, really but I'm doing that so that I can get it in and up as high, you know, under that veneer as I possibly can. And then I gently pushed out the excess and wiped it away before I taped or clamped the repair.
The other thing I'm trying really hard to do is to not clamp things too tightly because I don't want to squeeze out too much glue. Just, just tight enough is what you want. So here is that drawer. Whew, wow. Oh my goodness, that poor drawer. Um, Again, both it and the top stayed clamped or taped for a full 24 hours. I really wanted that glue to have time to set up. The next day, I began to tackle the veneer damage on the top. I used some heavy duty wood filler in a walnut color and I overfilled all of those damaged areas. Now, I knew that this was a bit of a risk. With damage like this that we're seeing on the top, Probably the best thing to do is to do a veneer patch, but not having any walnut veneer pieces, I decided to go ahead and take my chances with the wood filler. I don't know, we'll see at the end if you think that was good enough. Oh, the drama. Okay, time to take a look at our dresser's frame. I sanded back one of the front legs and then I removed the old finish from one of the side panels. Seeing them next to each other, you can really clearly see that they are not the same species of wood. That side panel is that beautiful walnut and the leg is a less expensive something or other that that very thick dark stain was disguising to make it look more like the walnut. I continued on with my sanding using three different approaches with this piece scuff sanding the framework that I had decided I wanted to paint, clean up sanding the areas that were just kind of gross that had overspray, glops, or dings and, and little scratches, and then very careful grit step by grit step sanding of all of the remaining walnut veneers. I went back and forth from foam abrasives to flat abrasives, from coarse to medium to fine grits. When I finally made my way back to the top, I carefully sanded back all of that wood filler. Then I tackled the inside of the drawers. Yep, there was no escaping it, my friends. Every surface of each of these drawers needed sanding as well. Here you can see how that sticky, sludgy old finish looks in that routed drawer edge. It just makes it look dingy and dirty, doesn't it? Sanding drawers is a ton of extra work, but I have to tell you, it feels so good when you finally get it done makes a world of difference. As I sand the top of the drawer fronts, you can start to really see how they are constructed. Basically, we have plywood sandwiched between two pieces of veneer. That's another reason why removing veneer isn't the most ideal choice. Those two veneers are actually working together to seal and stabilize the entire drawer front. If one isn't there, then the other side theoretically could absorb and lose moisture at a very different rate than the other side, which could contribute to overall warping. Whew, yeah. lots of sanding on this one. Okay, after a full day, I removed all of those clamps and that gallon of primer because I ran out of clamps. And Hooray! Okay, the front of the drawer actually looked pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. 
I sanded back any leftover glue spots as well as that little bit of rag that got stuck and then I used my wood filler again to fill in the few little chips and the little tiny cracks that I could see on this drawer front. I did the same thing on the other drawers. Here you can see I found a few spots that needed gluing on the other big drawer, just a, a couple spots. To me, using the wood filler on these tiny, small little cracks was kind of like preventative medicine. Anything to help keep moisture out of those veneers in the future, I'm thinking is a, a good idea for the longevity of these beautiful drawer fronts. Okay, let's see if we can fix that broken foot. I grabbed my amazing mold putty mix and I mixed up equal parts of the two different colors. And once I had that consistent soft yellow, I formed it around the front of our intact foot. After about 20 minutes, I pried that off. And then after checking to make sure that it fit on the injured foot, I mixed up some Bondo wood filler You've seen me use this many times probably. Bondo is a really strong, tough wood filler, so it makes it really ideal for repairs such as this one. And then I very carefully filled just the front, just the big toe, if you will, of that mold. I really did not want extra Bondo pushing and squishing out all around the foot but also I wanted to make sure I had enough. So that fill was something I did really, really carefully. Okay, after about a half hour, I pulled off that mold and hooray, all right. It looks like we have a repaired foot. Pretty good. <laughs> I came back in with some sanding paper and carefully cleaned up those edges. Okay, back to more sanding. <laughs> when last we left the sanding, I sanded back all of the wood filler on the drawer fronts and then I hand sanded the front edge of the top of the dresser where I had added some filler as well. Again, more preventative medicine thinking, hopefully that this will keep moisture from getting under that edge and therefore protect its fresh glue application. I had finally gotten the drawer veneers where I wanted them repair wise and so I began to refine sand them. This is a super important step but it can be a little nerve wracking with veneers, especially when they are this old. So you gotta really keep an eye on your work. I carefully sanded each front with a fine grit, then a very fine grit, and then a super fine grit, using my foam abrasives to contour over those bow fronts. A super fine grit is equivalent to about a four to 500 grit sandpaper, and so, when I was finished, they were feeling really smooth. Okay, a quick belly button clean out here. <laughs> More on this missing keyhole cover later. And then it was back up to the top. Okay, I decided to try the iron trick with this little scratch here. I added some water and a damp rag and then used my iron to steam treat the scratch. The hope here is that this will essentially kind of plump up a scratch. It'll kind of plump up that little spot with some moisture and in doing so, any wood fibers that are just pressed down will expand up back into place. You can see it didn't visually completely work, but it did definitely feel a little bit less deep. Not wanting to risk any more water treatment, I decided to go ahead and use this wiping wood filler by Minwax. I just applied some over any scratches I saw, and then after about five minutes, I wiped that back with a damp rag. It was about that time I realized I had forgotten to remove that old MDF piece on the bottom of the piece, so I cut that out and then 
Yep, it was back to the top again for some more sanding. I did the same finish sanding treatment on the top that I had done with the drawers, carefully going up the grit ladder from fine to very fine to super fine. Okay, let's talk about smell, shall we? <laughs> uh, always a potential issue with older furniture. This dresser actually was pretty good. There's that pretty good again. Just the faintest whiff of a musty smell. But, you know, if it's there, I like to bust out some shellac. I'm going to use this clear shellac today. I sprayed the entire inside and frame and then the drawers. That will seal in any remaining musty odors. Then I got out my wood repair markers and began doing my best to hide all of those little repairs and inconsistencies on the drawers. You know, I am not sure why I decided to do this faux repair work before I sealed the piece. Somehow this made sense to me in my mind. <laughs> But things were looking pretty good and my confidence was growing. And then I tackled the top. As that long repair in the front began to stare up at me, I began to worry. Yeah, worry. I started to worry. I'm not, I was not sure that that repair was going to hold up under scrutiny. We'll have to see. Okay, putting a pin in my worries about the top, it was time to get out a little bit of paint. This is the color Everett by Fusion Mineral Paint. They describe it as an aged and weathered olive green with subtle bronze undertones. This complicated color is earthy, tranquil, and grounding. Pretty cool. Okay, I grabbed my two inch angled brush and I began applying Everett to the dresser's frame. Okay, as my first coat of Everett dried, I got ready to seal all of those walnut veneers. And for that, I decided to use some Odie's oil. This is just my second time ever using Odie's oil. I was actually first introduced to it by my sister. She and her husband had used it to finish some hardwood floors they had discovered under their carpet in their front room. And they had been really happy with the results. I'm also really interested in learning more and more about products that can seal and protect without looking plasticky and are more environmentally friendly. And I think Odie's Oil seems to check both of those boxes. The other neat thing about it is that I didn't really want to stain the walnut. I wanted the natural oils of the walnut to kind of be in charge of how it ultimately colorized itself. So my understanding is that there are two really important parts to a successful application of this product. The first is to use only a very little bit of it. A little bit of it goes 
a long, long way. And then to make sure to wipe back and buff everything really well after about an hour. Wow. Can I just say watching these walnut veneers react to this application was so much fun, especially after all that work. I mean, wow. Wow, look at that. So cool. Okay, as my oil did its thing, I quickly added a second coat of Everett. And then I came back and I used an old terry cloth towel to wipe back and buff the veneers. You want to keep wiping and buffing until your fingers don't leave any drag marks. If you're seeing that, then there is still too much product on the surface. It should really pretty much feel dry to the touch. It should not feel oily. I did the same application to the side panels and then I did the top. You'll notice that I'm also not wearing any gloves and I'm not wearing a respirator. That's because Odie's oil is that non-toxic. It's actually food grade, which is so nice. You can see I'm really massaging it in with the applicator pad. And then again, after an hour of allowing it to really soak in and penetrate into that veneer, I come back and I buff it really, really, really well. Wow, I wish you could feel this, friends. Like butter. So smooth. Not wanting our paint details to fall behind I gave them all a good sanding with a super fine grit pad and then I did a third coat of Everett. Okay, remember these? I gave the mirror mounts a quick wash and a sand. By the way, you can see one of them has an injury. It's missing a point on its base. I think I'm just not going to worry about that for right now. And then I got out this Odie's After Hours. Actually, it's Odie's Dark. Yes, it comes in a dark version as well. So cool, right? I stirred that jar up really, really well, making sure to incorporate all of those ingredients. And then I applied that Odie's oil all over those mirror mounts. Now this dark finishing oil has some natural oxidizing oils in it that will help to darken this lighter wood over time, but I'm not expecting it to match our walnut veneers. That kind of magic simply does not occur in woodworking, <laughs> but I figured they would be a little bit closer this way. So now it was time for some chemistry. I decided to make a decorative trim piece to repair that spot between the two top drawers. And for that, I mixed up some casting resin and poured it into this trim mold by Redesign with Prima. This was pretty great. With this one batch, I was able to fill all but one of these trim molds. Well, the last one was a little bit short, but it was pretty close. It was pretty good. <laughs> This resin takes about five minutes to set up. Here you can see it on the time lapse, how the resin turns white as it dries. And then it very easily pulls right out and is ready to use.
All right, let's take a look here. I held up all of the trim pieces. Ah, oh, that's a little small. Hmm, I don't think so. Eh. That one is a good fit. Hmm, hmm that's kind of interesting. And then I put those two top drawers in and stood back and looked just to make sure I liked my choice. And yep, I think I'm gonna go with that flower trim because I had chosen the flower trim piece I needed to snip off two of the end leaves, as well as just a little bit on the sides of that center flower so that the drawers won't run into them as they open and close. I sanded back that bit of paint in the center bar and then I applied the trim piece, anchoring it with some tape and wiping back the excess glue before taping the top and the bottom. I think our drawers deserve some special treatment after all of that, so I picked out a paper with a fresh floral snap that will nicely echo our custom trim, and then I got out some big mama's butter and I hit all of the drawer sides inside and out. This will seal and protect them as well as make them look and smell gorgeous. Once my glue had dried, I carefully peeled back the tape and then I gave my decorative trim piece two good coats of Everett, making sure to bring a very thin layer of paint about a half inch into the dresser so that the drawers would look seamless when they were sitting in place. While I was working there, I also remembered to add those missing drawer stoppers. Okay, remember that missing keyhole cover? Well, I tried but failed to find a replacement. So I made one. I used that same putty and bondo technique that I had with the foot repair. And once I had my mini keyhole cover, I shaped it with my Dremel. Then I added some gilding wax. And after a quick little sanding on that opening, I glued it into place. I added some more Big Mama's Butter wax to the inside of the piece to help protect the paint where the drawers will be moving as well as add that yummy orange grove scent. And then once my glue was dry, I added just a little bit of black wax around my faux keyhole cover to help disguise it. For an added touch of shine and specialness, I decided to go ahead and replace the poles with something a little unexpected. Okay, do you remember our family friends fixer? In need of many a repair and restoration and a little dash of modern redesign? Well, here she is now. Whoa! Welcome back, friend. We've missed you. Gleaming from head to toe, my friend Sandy's dresser seems to be lighting up the workshop. Her sparkling brass floral pulls and subtle floral trim take us in a fresh, modern direction without being too sweet and her repaired lower drawer seems magically brand new and has revealed the stunning original craftsmanship of her flowing pattern matched drawer veneers. And what of the top? Is it perfect? No, no it's not. But I think for now, it's good enough. And about those drawers, well, they're so pretty, they need to be under lock and key.
But we're still not done because those original mirror mounts are also ready to be installed if a period mirror is found or they can frame up a more modern piece of decor. Either way, I think my good friend's fixer is definitely good enough and good to go. So how much did my new good enough good friend cost me? Well, the dresser of course was free. I spent about $7 worth of Odie's oil, both regular and dark. Another $5 on that Everett green paint. The hardware was my biggest splurge at $47, but that was for 10 pulls, 10. Another $25 on that drawer wallpaper and another $22 for everything else, which includes Bondo, mold putty, resin, drawer stops, glue, wood filler, sanding pads, syringe, and wax bringing my total out-of-pocket cost to $106. And I'm still not done. <laughs> Gotta put those panels in on the bottom. Everything but the kitchen sink on this one. <laughs> So what is my new friend's destination? Well, I've already told my friend Sandy that if her family would like the dresser back, I would be so happy to gift it right back to them. But if they don't have a space for it, what might I list this one for? Well, do me a favor and you tell me what you think it is worth. This piece took me about 30 hours of labor and just over $100 in materials. Those original pulls and the wheels are available. It, somebody wants to have those. Be honest, tell me what you really think. I expect to hear a wide range actually in price points. And then we'll meet back here and we'll discuss after the next fable because I think it'll be kind of interesting. Yeah, interesting comparison. I hope that today's fable was good enough for you. If so, please do give me that thumbs up and make sure to subscribe because if you liked this one, you're gonna wanna see the next one. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables.